The Valley of the Kings, Umjuat and Gate Book and the Cave Book. The two relatively similar books describe the sun god's journey through the underworld. They are similar in structure, which divides the night journey into 12 hours. The hours are divided into three registers in the representations. In the middle register the solar barge sails on the beyond Nile. The wicket book adds a wicket between each hour. The gates are guarded by demons who prevent anyone from passing who does not know the correct spells. The sun god, in his age form as the ram-headed Atum, moves into the night bark in Akit West. In the Amjuat he is accompanied by various gods who help him on the night journey. Among them are Upyout, the opener of the ways, Hatha, the mistress of the bark and Horus at the helm. The pharaoh also takes part in the journey to the afterlife. In the Book of Gates, the sun god is accompanied by only two gods, Sia and Heka in sight and magic. Atum Re needs these gods to get through the gates. Sia, the speaker of Re, stands at the bow and opens the gates with his sayings. In addition, the sun god is always surrounded by the protective snake men, which is still missing from the Amjuat book. The journey of the sun god is a journey into the mysteries of time and space. The endlessness of time is symbolized in the Amjuat and the gate book by an endlessly coiled serpent's body. The snake is sometimes replaced by a braided rope in depictions. From the coils of the serpent or rope the hours are born. Time is also represented by stars or our goddesses. The Egyptians were apparently aware of the relativity of time. According to Egyptian ideas, one hour of night that the sun god passes through and assigns life to the blessed dead corresponded to an entire lifetime on earth. The relativity of time also causes changes in direction. In the last hour of Amjuat, the solar boat travels through the body of a snake from tail to mouth. Because the gods travel backwards through the time snake on the barge, they are rejuvenated. The gate book depicts the same phenomenon in the third hour. There the bark is pulled through an elongated image of the earth. Before the rejuvenated sun can be reborn the next morning, the sun god's crew must fight against danger every night. Another snake, Apophis, drinks the river's water and the solar barge runs aground. The gods fight Apophis and force him to spit out the water, then the snake is dismembered. Nevertheless, the snake reappears every night. The Apophis serpent, which stands outside of creation, is an integral part of the eternal battle between good and evil. The Amjuat and the Port Book also deal with the punishment of enemies of Re who have not passed the death sentence. They will be destroyed in lakes of fire, or thrown into pits of flame. Demons armed with knives dismember the damned. This is the Egyptians' idea of hell. For the blessed departed, the lake of fire is a life-giving lake. You get everything you need. They also receive a new body resulting from the union of the BA soul with the body. Even the sun god needs this union. He descends into the underworld as a ram-headed BA and unites with his body in the sixth hour of the night. Osiris is this body that remains in the underworld, while Re rises on the horizon in the morning, rejuvenated as the god Chepri. When the books were written is controversial in research. The gate book is dated by H. Altenler to the time before the New Kingdom. Eric Hornung argues that it originated in the Amarna period, as foreigners entered the underworld for the first time. This cosmopolitan worldview is strongly reminiscent of the time of Akhenaten and his image of foreigners. The later underworld books differ from the Amjot and the Gate Book in the following features. The division of hours is abandoned in favor of sections. The solar bark is usually missing, the sun is only present through a red solar disk. The registers are often staggered. The text is placed after the images only preceded by Ramses V. The lower register is always reserved for the damned. The Cave Book The Cave Book only appears as a wall decoration in the 20th dynasty and is in the tomb KV9 of Ramses V and by fully transmitted.
It can also be found in excerpts in the tomb of Ramses Ive, the Andix the underworld is depicted as a series of caves through which the sun god passes. The reward, or punishment, in the afterlife is particularly emphasized. Osiris is now more prominent than in the older books, but is still not clearly differentiated from Re. One underbar section, the round-headed Re Atum enters the underworld to take care of Osiris and send the enemies to the site of destruction. Two underbar section, Atum comes to the chest of Osiris, which contains his body. The enemies are condemned to non-existence. Demons behead them and tear out their hearts. Three underbar section, Re Atum enters the cave of Aka. The etherphalic body of Osiris lies beneath the earth god Aka. Here the unity of Re and Osiris is emphasized. Re meets the four figures of Osiris, the lords of Dat. Enemies are presented again in the lower register. Four underbar section, the second half of the data begins. Isis and Nephthys pick up the body of Osiris to initiate his revival. He is then looked after by Horus and Anubis. Five underbar section, the sun is rejuvenated by Taton, the god of the earth's depths. The goddess Nut holds up the ram, headed sun god and the solar disk. In the lowest register, enemies are boiled in cauldrons. The etherphalic Osiris stands with his BA the bird on his head, in front of a protective snake. The litanies are now intended to revive Osiris. Six underbar section, Anubis revives the mummies in the sarcophagi, and a scarab pushes the sun in front of him. As the enemies plunge into the site of destruction, Osiris rises from it. At the end, the solar barge is pulled out of the underworld, but it is not yet completely visible.